Hello, it's a great day at a woman's place. And today we are going to continue on our firm foundation throughout the rest of the year. The only thing is we've already developed some pretty deep levels of what to add to our foundation. And uh, there are so many of them right now. I'm going to have to write up a list and share them with you on the Facebook post. But we have already talked about so many things. We've talked about patience. We've talked about confidence. We've talked about contentment. We have talked about um, being strong. And we've talked about um, dealing with some inner workings. We've talked about being yourself, not being a clone of anybody else. And so we have given ourselves on a woman's place some wonderful levels of firm foundation to stand on for the days to come. Listen, what I know about a woman's place is that it is not just a platform for today. It's not just a platform for tomorrow. It is not just a here today, gone tomorrow platform. The things I'm sharing with us um, are going to impact our lives and generations to come. You know, there's a big word out today, and it's a word called legacy. And there is this desire to leave a legacy for our children or for our families, leave something that they can build upon. Well, what is there better to build upon than the firm foundation of the word of God? I tell you, anything else built on sinking sand it's coming down, baby. When the winds blow and the waters rise, it is coming down. The firm foundation on which we are to build our lives starts with the word of God. And that is exactly what we've been dishing out to you since last January. I thought about it yesterday and I said to myself, wow, this year is almost gone. Our first year of a woman's place is almost complete. Amen. I was thinking about Monday manna and in my heart, I said, you know, I kind of miss Monday manna. But what I had to embrace was the fact that there are times and seasons for situations. There's times and seasons for plans. There are times and seasons for purposes in our lives, right? And so it was time for Monday Manna to transition, transition into a woman's place. But this is not just for us in the here and now. This is for generations to come. It's being recorded, it's being um, housed in cyberspace. It is for generations to come as we spend time growing ourselves, understanding the will of God for our lives, as we spend time um, searching our hearts really and finding out what is really on the inside. What's really going on in me? What is really going on with me? And more importantly, how are those two things affecting other people in our lives? And so a woman's place is here to share information, to communicate some goals and to communicate some strategies that we can use and implement in our lives on a regular basis. Now, I know, I know that there are plenty of other opportunities out there for you to research, to lock in, to lean into. And I understand that. And I thank God for that because, you know, one person cannot do it all. It takes an army to get the job done. Amen. And so I'm glad that those options are available. And, and because of that, let me say to you again, I appreciate any time that you make to spend time with me. I appreciate any time that you set aside out of your busy schedule to listen to, to hear, to consider you know, what it is that we're, we're sharing on a woman's place. And for that, my heart is grateful and I am thankful. It's a challenge sometimes because you never really know who's listening. You, you know, you don't know how many, the stats are not always available and all those kinds of things. And so I just have to walk by faith and not by sight to believe that whatever God has put on my heart for today 
for this woman's place is sufficient for somebody to be blessed, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, that their hope, their faith, their trust and confidence would be in God and in God alone. Because ultimately, when it's all said and done, that is all that's going to matter. We talked about purpose for a long time. All that's going to matter is, did you do what the Father asked you to do? That's all that's going to matter. Did you do it in a way that would honor him, full of integrity, full of mercy if need be, full of grace, amen, so that other people can, you know, save their face, you know? And so there's certain things that we have to implement as women of God as we build this firm foundation and we keep adding layers upon layers upon layers upon layers that we can ensure that we are doing what the will of the Father is. Now, let me say that. Just because what he would have one person do doesn't get as much accolades as what another person does does not mean that what you're doing is any less valuable to the kingdom. It is just as valuable to the kingdom as the one who has their name in neon lights. I think about this a lot, and I think I mentioned this a lot as well, because um, when you are wanting to do more, right? How many of you actually want to do more. There's just something on the inside that says, man, if I could just do this, or if I could just do that, I would love to do this. Meaning I would love to go on missions trips, or I would love to, you know, go back to school and earn my degree. I would, I would love to be able to raise a, uh, a ministry of some sort, a, a nonprofit of some sort to help those who are in despairing situations. And we have these dreams. We have these goals. We have these desires on the inside of us and, and they are there and we cannot discount them and we cannot, you know, uh, diminish them. They won't go away. They just keep waking up every morning that I wake up. And then you wonder, what do I do with all of this? There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time and a season for everything. And what I have found out and I, I haven't even cracked the Bible yet. I guess I just need to talk today. But what I have found out today, let me say what I found out in my life, in my experiences, is this. When I have a desire on the inside of me and I begin to try to make it come to pass on my own, I am met with failure. Anytime I try to do it on my own, I try to make it happen on my own. I try to implement, you know, my own smart ideas about something. It doesn't turn out as flourishing as it could have if I had done these two things. If number one, I had sought the Lord about what's on the inside of me, and number two, if I had waited for his instructions about what to do and how to do. So let's talk about that today. Okay, so for the rest of the year, we're going to look at attributes of God because we've laid a foundation um, so, um, I mean, it's a concrete foundation and we have laid that since the beginning of the year. So for the rest of the year, we're going to add the attributes of God, because what difference does it make if you understand, um, the things that we've talked about on a woman's place, laying the foundation and being content, being patient and, uh, waiting on God and all of these things that we have laid as stepping stones on our foundation, if you don't understand the beauty of the God that we serve, right? And so I've got some attributes of God that we're going to share every Monday up until December 31st, which I believe is on a Monday. Maybe it's a Sunday. Anyway, all the way up until the end of December, the last Monday in December, and we're going to share the attributes of God because when we understand 
um, how good our father is, It'll make it much easier to be willing to let those foundations that we've laid stay and rest secure. So we're going to talk about um, guidance and we're going to talk about wisdom. We're going to go to the book of Psalm and the book of Proverbs, okay? But let me just share this attribute about God. God leads us in the way we should go. And that's funny to me because in my prayer time this morning, I said to him, you know the way that I should go. And so God leads us in the way we should go. His word teaches us how we are to live and think, even with the lighting that still wants to go out on my light. But his word teaches us how we are to live and think. Now, this is for... Um, this is for us as believers, ladies. His word teaches us how we are to live and think because God gives his children the Holy Spirit. They recognize his voice and follow him. We can trust God to lead us in the right way. Without God's guidance, we stumble and fall like people in the dark. And that's what I was saying about when, when I, I have this desire on the inside, but I'm not submitting it to God for his guidance or his wisdom or his counsel. It is sure to fail. I'm just going to say for me, that's what I've experienced as his daughter. If I have gotten ahead of him, I'll put it like that. If I've gotten ahead of him, then it, it, it either fails or it takes a whole lot longer or it, it just goes wonky, kind of wonky, kind of, you know, wickered, kind of wired. You know, it just doesn't work out right, you know. And so there is a need for us to be willing to hear and obey. Amen. So Proverbs, I'm sorry, Psalm 25. Psalm 25 says this. It says, show me the path where I should walk, O Lord. Psalm 25 Verses, I believe it's verse four and five. Let me just look at my reference right, right quick for guidance. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I am getting over a bit of a cold. Yes, 25, four and five. So if I sound kind of raspy or I'm not coming across as clear as I normally do, that's because, but I've got the victory. Amen. Psalm 25, four and five says this. And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. New Living, you can tell I've had this Bible a while. New Living Translation. No one uh, says, show me the path where I should go, where I should walk, O Lord. Show me the path where I should walk, O Lord. Point out the right road for me to follow. Now that is for somebody today. You are wondering what is the right way for me to go. You've got these other options. It's kind of like being at, at a fork in the road. Only the fork has four different times on it, you know, and you're standing there looking at the opportunities and saying, which way should I go? You don't have to decide that on your own. God is willing to give you the guidance that you need. Listen to Psalm 25 again. Psalm 25. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. I am not re-recording this. I'm going to be just as candid as I need to be. Psalm 25, 4 and 5 says, show me the path where I should walk, O Lord. Point out the right road for me to follow. How many of you are in that space right now? How many of you are in that space right now? And you're saying literally, point out the right road for me to follow. Verse 5 says, lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. God is willing to guide us if we're willing to listen. He's willing to show us the right road if we literally, like George Mueller said, have dismissed every ounce of my will as is possible. Then God is willing to show us the right way to go, the right road to take. But one thing I can assure you of, he's not going to fight with you about it. 
<laughs> when we have gotten to the place where our will is no longer our desire, then God has free reign to show us the road that he wants us to take. So the first attribute we're going to talk about today is we are talking about guidance, God's guidance, our Heavenly Father's guidance. And the second thing that we're going to talk about in relation to that, because you said, well, how would I trust his guidance? What is it about him that makes me want to trust him? Or what is it about him that you're saying, Danette, that would encourage me to know that trusting him and his guidance is the right thing to do? Well, listen to this. Let's go to Proverbs 2. One second. Proverbs 2. Oh, let me just look this up again. Proverbs 2, 6 through 12. So this is going to be a bit of a, re a bit of a read, but listen with open ears. Amen. Proverbs 2, 6 through 12. It says this. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and understanding. Search for them as you would for lost money or hidden treasure. Now I started at verse two. So then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. Knowledge of God to know that God wants the best for you in every, did I say every, every situation. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of good sense to the godly. Good sense. <laughs> you know, you've heard people say, they just ain't got good sense. God, God will grant us good sense. Amen. He grants a treasure of good sense to the godly. That just tickles me on the inside. He is their shield protecting those who walk with integrity. I'm thinking of the, the one that constant, it's like the commercial, not the commercial, but the cartoon where um, let's just say the animated character just walks and bumps, bumps into a wall, right? And, and, and backs up and bumps into the wall again and it backs up and bumps their head up against the, you know, you just ain't got good sense. You know? <laughs> How many times you got to bump your head up against the wall before you decide, you know what? I need to find a different way to handle and manage this situation because I'm constantly bumping my head up against the wall. Well, God, according to the New Living Translation, he grants a treasure of good sense to, to the godly. He is their shield, protecting those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of justice and protect, protects those who are faithful to him. There has to be an element of your faithfulness to him. It's like being in a relationship. I hate to say a marriage relationship, but that, that would be the, the concrete indicator um, of being faithful. In a marriage relationship that you've not given yourself to anybody else. Now, if you have, there's no shame. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation. I'm just using this as an example. Amen. Don't let that continue to be um, something you bump your head up against. Let God give you good sense about how to get past that. Amen. And so he guards the paths of justice and protects those who are faithful to him. We have to be faithful to God. We have to have an attitude that says, you know what? I'm in this thing for the long haul. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> I'm in it for the long haul. Amen. Until it's all said and done, until the fat lady sings. Amen. Um, I'm in it until it is done. I'm in it till the fourth quarter whistle blows. I'm in it. Amen. I've been in it for, for years. I'm not going anywhere. Amen. And so that's my heart. My heart is faithful to God. Amen. And so we have to, you have to make that concrete determination. Matter of fact, let me challenge you today to make that concrete determination in your heart that you are going to be faithful to God. And you might say, I don't even know God. I just watch these because they're entertaining. Amen. But if you don't know him in the pardoning of your sins, if you don't, as the Baptists say, if you don't know him 
you know, in the fellowship of his suffering, amen, and you've never committed your life to Christ, you have never um, made reference to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let's pray this this prayer right quick. Now, somebody might say, oh, you need a longer, more involved, and more in-depth prayer than that. No, what you need is an open heart and a willing spirit. And that's all you need. So if that's you, let's pray this prayer right now. Oh God, in Jesus' name, I come before you asking for forgiveness of my sins, asking for the pardon of my sins, asking that the blood of Jesus would wash me white as snow in your sight, oh God. I thank you right now for the opportunity to be called your child, adopted into your family, whereby I can call you my father. I commit my ways to you. I commit my life to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen again. Welcome to the family. Amen. And so he gives godly, um, he gives good sense to the godly. He guards the path of justice and protects those who are faithful to him. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to get in a good Bible-based church. I'm talking about a Bible-based church that is declaring the truth of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Find a good shepherd, not a hireling. Amen. Go to John chapter 10 and read that if you need to know about that. In the Gospels, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 10. Ask the Lord to guide you. Remember, we just talked about guidance. Ask him to guide you to a good shepherd, to a shepherd that watches well over the flock. Amen. And he'll do that. I promise you. So then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. And you will know how to find the right course of every right course of action. Listen to this. Ah! Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. And you will know how to find the right course of action every time. That's what I was saying when I was um, younger, much younger, doing things on my own. I had a thought. I went with the thought. You know, they say run with it, right? I had a thought. I went with the thought. It didn't work out. I had a thought. I went with the thought. It didn't work out. The timing was off. I had not asked God for guidance. I had not been looking to him for wisdom. But in the New Living Translation, verse 9, chapter 2, it says, then you will understand what is right, what is just what is fair. And you will know, you will know, you will know how to find the right course of action every time. How many of us need to know the right course of action every time? Ooh, this is a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Hey, Ben, just give me a couple more minutes. The right course of action every time. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Not only will wisdom enter your heart and you'll know what to do, not just what to do, but when to do, not just when to do, but how to do. And because of that, the joy will fill your heart to know this is indeed the right way to go. Wise planning will watch over you. See, you know, um, there is an element of um, beauty when you plan your ways. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, man plans his ways, but the Lord is the one that directs his path. So there is, there is an element of um, structuring your time. Um, Mary Kay says, take out your paper at night before you go to bed and write down the six most important things to do tomorrow. Amen. Why? So you can be focused and so that while you're sleeping, those things will be re uh, rounding the corner of your brain and your brain will be going to work to give you an idea. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost will be going around in your brain to give you wisdom and guidance on how to get it done. Or if it needs to be done that day, there's a right time for everything. This is so good. I'm so excited. 
For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise planning will watch over you and understanding will keep you safe. See, God's wisdom hovers over us and gives us direction about what to do, how to do, when to do, and why to do. And not only that, that then fills us with joy. And not only that, but will keep us safe. I'm watching the, the uh, World Series right now. I'm not really a baseball fan, but for some reason, I've been drawn to the World Series this year. And I tell you, I'm, I'm going for the Texas Rangers, in, in case you want to know. And so I'm watching this, and I'm watching how diligent and how determined and how focused these players are. I mean, from the dugout to the back of the field. Amen. And they are so focused and so determined on what it is that they need to do to accomplish their goals for that game. And I'm talking about balls are flying here and there and, and being hit into the stands and home runs and uh, runners batted in and all of this stuff is going on. The excitement feel, I mean, it's just something about it. Something about how God has made us. Something about, and God, he, and he didn't leave us out, ladies. There's something about how God has made us that causes us to have this joy on the inside while we live this life. While we live this life. Now, let me say this. There's nothing in this life that is going to fulfill you completely except Jesus. So why not just enjoy whatever it is God has for you to do? Amen. I hope this helped you today. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I hope this helped you today. I hope this, um, yeah, like sparked, you know, turned on the light bulb for you. To know, first of all, that God is willing to give us guidance. And second of all, he's willing to share his wisdom with us. And let me tell you anything. When God gives us anything, it is bound to prosper. The, his ways will never fail. Amen. And so you can't lose with what you use. Amen. So we're going to take these next weeks on A Woman's Place and we're going to talk about the attributes of our God. Because when we understand truly who he is, we understand his character, we understand his nature, we understand how he thinks and how he moves in situations according to the Bible, then we are better able and equipped to say, I will trust you. I'm going to trust you with everything that I've got. And I promise you, that is the best thing for us to do. My name is Danette Hutchinson. This is a woman's place. Amen. And I'm thanking God for the guidance and the wisdom for this coming week. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to pick up two more attributes of this living, loving God that we serve. Until then, God bless.